day two of our hike on the long trail. If you want to see day one, it's posted. Okay. I'm going to talk about some nitty gritty stuff. So if you don't want to hear about miles and all that weird stuff, and you want to hear about us getting lost, you just skip ahead till this bobblehead of mine isn't waving around anymore. And that's when the video is going to actually start. Okay. So you can skip ahead, view my, uh, screw my view durations or watch this. We went 13 point, um, six miles today. We started at the new Seth Warner shelter and at, at mile marker 5.4. And now we're at a lookout at Porky Pine Lookout at mile 18.7, I believe it is. And so we hiked all that today. As you saw, we got a little bit lost. Um, it was good. There's a lot of creek crossings. It's really wet. There's water running down the middle of the trails. Um, some gnarly downhill. Um, you'll see that in a little bit. And some epic uphill. All right, sweet. Coming up the ramp. This is what the pooper looks like. And you walk in. Oh my god, you can't see much because it's dark. Okay. Toilet. There's like sawdust here. Um, yeah, pretty nice. Sweet. I know lighting is bad early in the morning, but this is pretty much what the entire trail is gonna look like. Kinda muddy, kinda wet. This is what we had to deal with yesterday. Couldn't get it that good on my phone, but now they have my GoPro, I can get some better footy. So stay tuned for better videos than of day one. Okay, y'all, made it back down to the beaver pond, 0.3 miles from that shelter. And yeah, this is, I'm on a little side trail right now that's closer to, oh, we meet up with the main trail. Yeah, this is essentially what the beaver pond looks like. This is my water filtration system and how I carry my water. Um, it's a bee free. It looks like this. Um, this is a 0.6 liter bag. They also make a three liter bag. And then essentially you just have this filter, this screws on top of this bag. So I like this system because this acts as my water bottle. When it's empty, I can compress it, put it into my backpack, compress really small like this. So it breaks down really well. Where's the best lighting? This is pretty, oh, this is good. This breaks down really well, really compact, small. And then all I have to do is buy a new filter it unscrews so i buy this new filter and it's really cheap i can keep the same bag so it's a reusable parts that's what i love the other thing is i have a dromedary a camel back by the way not getting sponsored by any of these companies while i'm talking okay so i have a camel back in here i like this system because i can fill up the camel back i just squeeze that be free it's a gravity filter but i can also squeeze it so it's a it's kind of like two filters but i squeeze it into my camel back here three liter camel back um since i'm filling it inside the backpack and not out of the backpack the camel back's probably squished a little bit so it's only filling maybe like two liters and then i like this system because the camel back comes down and i have this nozzle and i don't have to worry about water bottles or anything and this keeps me drinking the entire day if i have a water bottle it's hard to get to and i don't drink very often with a water bottle um that's personal preference so camel back and in this filter system you can use other filter systems like iodine iodine starting to phase out not used as much anymore um then there's aqua mirror which is a type of bleach like a, a one-to-one -one type of bleach you mix them into your water and you got to wait for half an hour 15 minutes warm water half an hour really cold water and then there's other gravity filters and like squeeze filters and such that you put on your smart water bottles. If you do want to go with water bottles, smart water bottles, lighter than Nalgene's, really helpful uh, to know. Nalgene's are kind of heavy. I think two Nalgene's is half a pound from my memory. Um, smart water bottles are a lot lighter than that. And there is a water filtration system that attaches to the top of the smart water bottles. I forget what it's called, but it's like, uh, gravity filter and you can also squeeze that one as well to make that flow the filter system go faster um, 
So I guess today is this day two of hiking is all gonna be about like filtration, water, what I do for water, um, maybe like coffee and that, what kind of coffee I like, things I put in my water to keep me going, to keep me hydrated. Um, yeah, that's amazing. So just expect more of like water themes today um, as it's raining and misty as you can see. Might as well keep it themed today, right? Let's go. Okay, one thing I wanna add with this water filtration system, this is really important, is that, whew, my, my, I'm full of water. This does not go into your dirty water. I do not dunk this nozzle into the dirty water because the clean water comes out of this nozzle and if there is drips of dirty water inside of here, then my water is contaminated. Okay, so that's tip number one. Do not get your nozzles in the dirty water. Set it aside, fill up your water system, and then add this nozzle, okay? The other thing is, with the bee free filters, you have to run it a couple times before you start using it. So squeeze water through before you start using it. The best is at home and you sink with clean water. Just get the water in here. The other thing you can do to check your filter is blow into here, into, into a water. So I blow it into my bag. And I blow for like 30 seconds. If I see air bubbles coming out of the filter, then it is broken. That means it froze or it somehow got broken, okay? The other thing is, once there is water in these filter systems, they cannot freeze. So, if you are anywhere close to like 30 degrees or zero Celsius, okay? You have to put this in your pocket. Do not put it in your backpack. Also, sleep with this in your sleeping bag. Put this in the Ziploc in your sleeping bag. Otherwise, your filter is gonna freeze and it's gonna break, and then you're not gonna be drinking clean water and you're gonna get Giardia. Freezing temperatures, any type of filter like this, put in your bag. If you have Aquamira or Iodine, it's okay, it can freeze, nothing's gonna happen. Remember, wait half an hour with freezing cold water with Aquamira. Ew. Beautiful sights, beautiful. Okay. From my experience so far, on day two, this is what it looks like. Oh, remember, follow those white markings, okay? Up on the tree, I don't know if you saw that. Also really muddy, by the way. Do you see that mud? Crazy. Look at this, this is the aftermath of the floods and so much rain we've been having. It's just been muddy. Okay, but what was I saying? Oh yeah, green tunnel, not many views, kind of crazy, so. This is what it's gonna look like. Very green, very tunnel-esque. Very few open views. So when you get to that beaver pond, when you do get to that, um, there's power lines and it's open. Enjoy it. Take Okay, my two hiking partners, we left this morning, stopped at the water source where you saw me film this uh, water intro with my bee free filter. Okay, right there, they kept going. I was like, oh, I'm gonna be five minutes. I'm gonna just film this, fill up my water and keep coming after you. Okay, that was like um, seven o'clock. Now it's eight, eight, uh, well, let's check the time. 8.50, so it's almost nine o'clock. It's been two hours. I've been hiking my butt off. I've been hiking like, I think I hiked four or five miles. We can check that. Um, so I've been hiking my butt off. I have not seen their tracks, right? Okay, I've been hiking four miles. I have not seen their tracks for a while. So I'm going northbound. I don't see any tracks going northbound because it rained last night. All I see is tracks going southbound, okay? So the other way. So that means they're not in front of me. I have one of their locations. I just got into service and I picked up their location 50 minutes behind me. 
I don't know how I passed them. Um, I don't think they have service because I called them. Um, should we see if you can see their service, where they are? Okay, this, right here. Here is a screen recording of the potential lost hiker. This is southbound. My, see that blue kind of sign right here? That shows that it's southbound because I'm pointing my phone south. Here, this is pointing northbound. That means they're behind me. Okay, we stopped and got water back there. Um, maybe a little bit farther back where they are. And I still don't know what happened. Um, looks like they're off trail a little bit um, out in the burnt section of the forest or maybe maybe this is a photo of like fall where it's like um where there is no leaves but i'll show you where we got water this is this is right here right here we got water right there that's where we picked up water that's where i saw them last now they're just like half a mile a mile further down the trail and i hiked all that distance I don't know how I missed them. Um, yeah, so that is their current location due to what I see on where my hiking partner is. This is supposedly their current location. And it says it's just off of the Appalachian Trail. So I think we have a case of a lost hiker. Found them after one hour. You! <laughs> <laughs> Crazy lunch spot, eh? Yeah, I've been so wanting to reach out to you. No. <laughs> Okay, needed those electrolytes. <laughs> mm -mm. No. I know what I would need. I don't ever need to do Okay, this is the aftermath of the flooding that happened here. As you can see, coming down here, there's like a cascading river. Blew this portion of the trail out. They refixed it, they did maintenance on it. This is crazy. In here look even got this that tie stuck in there but yeah there was just a river coming down this hillside blowing down just thrashing this trail aftermath of the vermont flooding yeah check this out just ripped through here took all the dirt away it's kind of gnarly you rock hopping down They came in, fixed the trail some, but it's still not perfect. Big steps, because it all just got rinsed out, you know, all that dirt. I mean, check out these massive steps. <sighs> Going downhill, it's a little hard with a pack, goes on your knees. Um, that's okay. I'm glad that this steps in here and not just loose rock, because this would be gnarly coming down. Woo! Epic. Dude, it's hiking through a boulder alley here. It's crazy. Check this out. <clears throat> little foot bath break and little fill up on the water break. Yeehaw. This is a borderline between the national forest and the wilderness. Is that what it's saying? Yeah, yeah we're entering the Glastonbury wilderness. So, everything that you want to know, we got lost. Um, I stopped to film my water filtration, as you're gonna about to see, or maybe you have seen. So, I was filming that, and my two hiking partners started to hike up ahead, five minutes in front of me, right? 
and I started blasting. I was like, I'm going to catch up to them. So I started hiking really fast, right? And they took a wrong turn by, you'll see in the video, I think um, 75 yards. I blew by them. They came back on the trail and then I kept hiking fast, fast, fast. And they waited for me thinking I was behind them. It was a little bit of a confusion. Then I waited, you'll see this, and they caught up to me. Everything was normal, everything's fine. I didn't really GoPro or take footage of us finding each other and meeting back up. I was just waiting on the trail and they walked up and they found me. So that's pretty much what happened. That's how we got lost. Really easy, split up for five minutes, took a wrong turn, went 75 yards down the wrong turn, and there you go, you get lost for an hour. That's how quick it can be. Um, so important, always know that you're following the trail and I think, I forget the, what they're called. There's these white hash marks on the tree. And that's indicating that you're on the long trail slash ACT or the AT. And so make sure you're always going where you're going. And I hope you th find this water purification good.